All right, so let's talk about Dragon Ball Super episode 72. And uh, forgive me for that poppy noise. Um, I laid back in this recliner chair thingy, and it just made that really poppy noise. Anyways, I wanted to do a special shout out for Geekless TV for my rev my uh, review uh, intro video thingy, majiggy. Yeah, awesome guy. Link in the description. Go check him out. He does a lot of good discussions. If you guys like my reviews, you guys will like his content. He does reviews, discussions, all that stuff. Because sometimes I get too heavily engulfed into gaming, and he's a very knowledgeable person. So. He does a lot of that stuff. Go ahead and subscribe to him. He, he He's an awesome guy. He truly deserves it. Anyways, enough plugging. That being said, let's talk about the latest episode. So I'm not going to talk too much about Hit's ability here. I did a video. You guys should have seen it by now. I am assuming that I uploaded it prior to this in which I talked about that. I go a little bit more in depth there. You know, based on the information provided, of course. You can only go so in depth, right? But that being said, Goku versus Hit. All right, so the episode starts off with Goku. Basically, they, they don't really explain it too well. It, it still is a bit of an ass pulled. Honestly, this episode had a few of them. Um, Goku brought himself back to life by shooting a key blast and aiming it at himself, apparently, according to Piccolo. He shot it up there. It was supposed to come back and kind of jumpstart his heart, and it brought him back to life. You know, kind of like how you can resuscitate somebody that dies for a second in the hospital. That was Goku, but Goku said he was gone for up to three minutes. I don't know how that all works logistically in real life, but I mean, this is Dragon Ball. That being said, I digress. It's not that big of a deal, but it is a bit of an ass pull that he can kind of bring himself back to life. I mean, like now, is he going to do that every time he's going to die against an opponent? Oh, I'm going to shoot this energy ball and this guy is going to shock my heart back to life. Please no. Anyways. I assume that's something that everybody can do, though, by the way, because it, they didn't say it was anything special or specific to him or a new type of ability or skill or anything. It was just a regular key blast. So that being said, he brings himself back to life. He taunts Hit into, he goats Hit into, you know, fighting him because he's like, hey, I came back, three-minute rule. I'm not dead. You said you'd kill me. I'm not dead. And Hit was like, I'm certain I killed you. My job is done. But nonetheless, Hit was like, yeah, fine, we'll go ahead and do it. Goku goes over to this foresty area that is basically perfect cover for Hit. Hit hides behind all these trees and stuff, and this is where we get into some cool stuff. I really did love seeing a lot of Hit and a lot of showcasing for Hit's character. It's awesome, 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 and I love it so much. Um, I, I feel like Dragon Ball Super doesn't really capitalize on a lot of their characters that they introduce. A new, new characters to the series like Kabe and stuff like that, I love to see more from those characters, and this was perfect insight into Hit and perfect preparation for the upcoming arc which i'm positive he should be in if he's not like what are you doing toei anyways that being said um hit is just like doing this after image type technique it's explicitly said to not be the after image but well i guess in the in the forest it could be something akin to that but it's not necessarily the same thing later on i'll talk about that goku says that hit's ability is not the after image but that that being said goku is sensing him all over the place he's just kind of just you know, Jack and Hit off like, oh, this is so awesome. He's doing this. This guy's this guy's amazing and stuff like that. And Hit's able to make his energy be sensed in multiple locations due to like these image clones or whatever you want to call them. I don't know what they are, but Goku's sensing them all over the place. He's closing his eyes, trying to focus on whether or not he sees Hit. And you know, Hit is hiding behind this tree and he shoots an invisible shockwave. Goku barely dodges it, but at that point Goku learns that, you know, it can go through things. And that's our first real insight into Hit's ability, other than or that offensive ability, if you will, that shockwave type ability other than what we saw at the end of the last episode and you know when he killed that mob boss last episode as well that's our first real look at it and a little bit more insight in that it is an invisible energy wave according to goku which we kind of already kind of knew but they go to a more open area <laughs> and this is where it's fun right and then vados and and uh champa are speculating and it wasn't just me or did champa look significantly fatter than he's ever looked in the art and the show in my opinion he looked really fat in this I don't really particularly care. I think Shamp is an awesome character, but I don't really care. It's just it was something an like observation I made. Like every time they showed him, it was like he just looked m a lot more fat than he ever did, <laughs> um, and that's probably like animation thing. Like the way that the animation kind of changed mid episode, it went from being decent to being kind of eh around this portion of the episode. Just really, just in my opinion, just boring. And I'm not gonna say lazy because I'm not an animator, but you know what I mean. It didn't look as well. Um, you know, and, and Shampa and, and Vados talk about the ability in which Vados explicitly says that, yeah, he's skipping time. He creates a separate world and stuff like that. Check that video out. It's on my channel if you guys want to get a little more insight and hear my opinions on that. But that being said, um, Shampa's like, it's so amazing. I can't even fathom it or something to that to that nature. And 
all the while, right? Vegeta's on the planet, still trying to train, and he's like, what about if I give you steak with Grandma's freaking special sauce on it? I'm like, this guy, Vegeta, is so just, he's like Dragon Ball Super's favorite comedic character at this point. They love playing jokes with Vegeta. In my opinion, Vegeta's probably the funniest character on the show, not gonna lie, because I feel like the Goku comedy thing, it's always the same trope, that he's just a dumbass sometimes and he does stupid things which you're kind of used to it by now to see Vegeta in this light where he's just like trying to bargain and you know begging Whis to train him earlier in the series putting on aprons cracking eggs like this guy like who is this guy you know so many people are like oh he's not a badass I hate him because he's not his bro come on now you gotta love this anyways um I think Vegeta's the funniest character on the show and Dragon Ball Super continues to put him in positions like that I think what makes it so funny just on a side note is the awkwardness because it's not really in his character to do that but he's going out of his way to do it and he's really lightened up but you know as you saw against Goku Black he can still throw down you know if he can he can still get hardcore on him if he needs to that's the thing it's not like he's just a softy you know he can still get hardcore but you know, around then, what happens is Vegeta basically, um, I guess, he tricks them into it. And, you know, they take him to Earth and they're spectators to the, to the fight. And they see the conclusion in that Goku breaks through its ability, shoots a Kamehameha wave, and Goku and Hit have a good laugh about it. It was really nice seeing Hit just chilling, laying there for a sec. And he really had a, a – you could tell Hit had a good time. You know, he is a character that – was so played up in the previous arc, the uh, well, a couple arcs ago in the Universal Tournament arc, to be like this badass, doesn't say anything, he doesn't care about anything, he's just there to kill you, that's it. And he still is kind of that, but he's really taken a liking to Goku, and you could tell. you know. And Goku is, <laughs> this is the funny thing, right? And I kind of thought this in the back of my head, but I was like, no. Because people were saying Goku can sense... I, I may have even said he can sense... I don't even think I can sense... I don't think I said that, said that uh, he can sense... Um, you know, hit coming or whatever. I think I said more or less like he kind of knew already, like it was tipped off to him because because uh, Weiss was suspicious, and of course, Vados and Weiss were in cahoots. They had to be. So that being said, Goku was the one that hired hit basically he told Whis Whis told Vados Whis got it done or Vados got it done excuse me and hit didn't even know that Goku's one that hired him and it's just funny like Goku wanted some training he wanted to fight hit and hit delivered you know so that's really cool um it was funny man you didn't you you wouldn't expect that but the episode ended it felt like the conclusion of a mini arc which it was and next week we're going to get into some great sandman stuff so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video please subscribe to the channel if you happen to be new and uh merry christmas merry christmas merry christmas slash happy holidays if you don't celebrate it or hanukkah whatever the case is for you personally uh happy holidays so hope you guys enjoyed please subscribe to the channel if you happen to be new and i'll catch you guys next time for some more super reviews peace